Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are with Nishi Pandit. We have done two sessions on medical astrology. So, if you have not watched them, please go and watch. In the first session, we discussed on Mars and Saturn's conjunction, and in the second session, towards the end, we also discussed about uh, the role of Venus and how it plays an important role in addictions and its afflictions. So, what's there in the third session? <laughs> okay, in this example, we have a child who has a muscular disease. So, I don't know the specifics, but it could be like a muscular atrophy or their muscles are not, you know, are paralyzed or not working properly. There's a, there's a disease in the muscles. And so, when you see a condition like that, the first thing you have to think is, what planet corresponds to the muscular system? And that is Saturn. Okay? Because Saturn is structure that which upholds the body, okay? So the muscular system is one of the core structures of the body. So, and here we have Sun-Saturn conjunction. So that's a difficult thing, like I said in the last chart. And you see, you always find when you look at diseases that there are some of these difficult conjunctions, you know, where enemies have come together and they're important planets in some way. You know, Sun is a person's vitality. Saturn, like I said, is a muscular system. And even though in this case, Saturn is in his own Rashi, right? So that seems nice. But let's look a little closer because we'll see that Saturn is actually combust. Okay? Because, he's too, because of his position relative to the sun. And there's a sun-Saturn conjunction. So that's difficult. So there, Saturn is not actually doing as well as you might think. Also in Shadbala, sun is the weakest planet. Okay? 73% out of 100% that it needs. So that's not so good. And in terms of Avashtas, both Sun and Saturn have some difficult Lachitari Avashtas going on. Um, so that's not easy. Also, there's Rahu opposition. Okay? Always Rahu somehow gets involved, right? Like I said. So that's part of why this is happening. And you know that in a child, disease in a child is a very different affair because children usually have diseases for karmic reasons. And not, that doesn't mean that they, get, they have disease out of punishment. I don't, I'm not thinking about it in that sense. So anyone who thinks of karma as like some morality doctrine needs to rethink you know, their concept because what I'm talking about is just cause and effect. Okay? Simple as that. It has nothing to do with deserved or undeserved and, and good person versus bad person. Not like that. But children are experiencing diseases from imbalances of a former lifetime. Okay? Because they're too young. You know, how, much, how much could they have done in this life to create a new cause of disease? And for that disease to have ripened into something that manifested physically, it takes a lot of time, actually. So when you see diseases in young people, like very young children, it usually it doesn't have to do with the present life. It's coming from something else. So then we have to look at Ketu, right? And by extension, we have to look at Rahu. So they become inevitably important factors. So in this case, we have Sun-Saturn conjunction to the person's, you know, vitality is suffering. Anytime that the vitality suffers on some level, there is a compromise, you know, a, a core compromise. Like Ayurveda says that, if the Agni is functioning in harmony, you know, evenly, there's no disease. But if the function of Agni goes either too high or too low, if it's imbalanced, in other words, in any way, that is the beginning of disease. Okay? So we have to keep that in mind when we look at the sun, the state of the sun in people's chart, that it's so important. Okay? And it makes sense. The sun is the light of the entire solar system in this sense. And in spirituality, it's the light of the soul. So it is that fundamental light. And any compromise in that is going to ripple through everything that proceeds from it. So Sun-Saturn conjunction, not a, not a good thing happening here. Saturn is, of course, suffering from that, and so is the Sun. So that is a recipe for somebody getting you know, the muscular disease that we know they have. Now Rahu is there. So that already shows us that some karmic factor is linked with this, you know? Because Rahu Ketu both are karmic factors in that sense. Now maybe, you know, you could say Rahu's placement here shows that 
this disease somehow will be a lesson for the child that he will develop, you know, in a new way from it. It'll be like an evolutionary experience for him. We all know these people who, like, for example, get completely paralyzed or something, but they become like very inspirational figures, you know? They go around and they preach and they teach and they show others that like, it's not, it's not really a disability. They rise beyond it, you know? And this might be that kind of a case, you know, where because their Rahu is there, you know, they're having to develop those energies and their disease manifested in that weak area of the muscular system. Now, I would also say that there's probably something to do with the skeletal system here too, because of the sun. The sun rules the skeletal system, the bones of the body. So often, you know, the two are, of course, intimately linked. What we refer to as the musculoskeletal system, for example, you know, refers to both of them as a totality. So I would, I would say that even though this chart is labeled as a muscular disease, there's likely some skeletal component to it or some skeletal effect from the muscular disease. Okay. There may be some deformities, for example. Um, but my point is that this person probably is going to grow a lot psychologically from this experience, you know, and they're Rahu and he's in cancer. So they're having to develop internally anyways. So their physical compromise will simply be a means for them to develop more internally. Now, Ketu is here uh, with Venus and Mercury in Saturn's Rashi, okay? So, on the one hand, that's all we need to know, is that Ketu is in Saturn's Rashi, because Saturn is the issue here, largely, we could say, because it's a muscular disease. And I already said it's a child, and so there's a karmic factor. Well, Ketu is in Saturn's Rashi. So, Ketu is affecting, you know, its lord there, by being in its sign. Now, Mercury is there and Venus is there. So again, the recovery power may not be that great, but certainly would be more than if it was Rahu with Venus. Um, Mercury and Ketu, you know, Mercury also plays a role in the nervous system and also in the skin. So I'm not really sure what to say about that in this case, because I don't know the case in detail, but maybe there was some factors, you know, relating to the skin or relating to the nervous system, you know, there could be, it could have been an accident, you know, like one of the reasons the child has muscular disease could be from an accident that they didn't really recover from fully, obviously, because they're permanently injured. I would see that through Venus and K2 and also through Mercury and K2. So that's definitely possible. Um, otherwise, Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm, you know, Jupiter is there too, you know, in Pisces, nice placement. So I think that's also part of how we'll see this person kind of, they'll, they'll rise through this challenge, you know, this bad, this upset in their life. You know, of course, when you're very young, your whole life is still ahead of you, you know, and then you get a significant disease, you know, you still have to live the rest of your life. And so there's a lot of potential for overcoming that limitation. And I think that's, that's partly what I'm seeing in this chart. But you know, I think I illustrated clearly what's going on, like how we see the planets and the Rashis and what's happening, you know, medically. What do you think, Babaji? Yeah, another question I wanted to ask was, uh, have you seen any general uh, diseases for somebody who has too many planets or prominent planets, like, uh, for example, in any of the tattvas, for example, water signs, then and fire signs. So then what kind of diseases have you seen then? Okay. Now, see, there's always those times when you get a chart where the person has like four or five planets in one Rashi. Okay. Immediately, you know that they have an imbalance because it's not, they have too much energy in one place. Whereas ideally that energy would be spread evenly in a balanced fashion, right? But instead it's concentrated in one area. So whatever, the first thing I do is take the element of that Rashi and say, okay, they have way too much, you know, let's say, let's say they have too many planets in Cancer, okay? Then I'll say they have too many, too much water element, you know, they're struggling with water element. And I would see what Rashis are, what planets are there, you know, and say, depending on what the problem is, is it too much water or not enough water? 
typically it's going to be an excess condition because when you have so many planets there, unless they are all terrible conjunctions and all starved or something, it's usually going to be an excess condition. So that means I will just relate that to the dosha. Then I'll say, okay, you know, they're going to tend to have a lot of vata problems or pitta problems or kapha problems. You know, and then I'll fill that in looking at, you know, the other other factors in the chart. But I also really need to see which planets are those that are in that Rashi. Is Lagna Lord there? Atmakaraka is there? Like how many self factors are in there? You know? What's outside of it? What's outside of it is going to be important for recovery, probably. So definitely what you're saying is correct. So what's outside of it? What do you mean by outside? Like in the uh, by outside of it, I mean what planets are not in that Rashi. Right? Oh, okay. There's too many planets in a Rashi. Well, which ones aren't? Oh, okay. Because they're going to represent something else. Now, if those planets are in a different Rashi that's also a water sign, then that makes things worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it depends. So the kind of disease you can see from that is would be all kinds of things. You know, there's no there's no set number. I mean, the kinds you know in Ayurveda we say that every disease can be understood as having like a vata, pitta, and kapha manifestation. Okay. So even diabetes, you're going to have like vata type diabetes, pitta type diabetes, and kapha type diabetes. So it can go in so many ways. Yeah, and then uh, there are these these tendencies of people that sometimes they like to eat too much spicy or too much sweet. Mm -hmm. Or they, they don't like sattvic food basically sometimes. So... Uh -huh. Where, which are the placements that you have seen for these? Because this is like too much rajas is there in the body. Yeah, too much rajas is there um, or too much tamas is there. From those, you can look at, you know, look at the rashis and see the gunas, see which gunas are dominating. You can also look at the grahas and see which gunas are dominating. But beyond that, also you can see that, you know, Venus rules taste. What tastes good to a person will be seen through Venus. So look at Venus again. You know, how is that person, how does life taste to this person? You know, see which Rashi, what are the elements of the Rashi that Venus is in? Which planets are Rashi aspecting that Venus or conjunct, conjunct that Venus? And what is the element of those planets that are joining it? Those things maybe will taste better to the person. Or there are pathological factors that make it seem like those tastes are like just preferred by the person, but they need to incorporate different tastes to be balanced. You know, there's a lot of ways looking at it. Venus is simply one way. Also, you can look at, you know, the six tastes in Ayurveda as, you know, we say that all the five elements are in the tastes, you know. So... Looking at the elemental balance of the chart, you can determine like what kind of tastes in food should this person prefer so that they can be balanced. And then you can make that recommendation very clearly. But you also can simply reverse engineer and say, look, this person loves like very spicy food and they have, you know, exalted Mars with sun, you know, and Rahu opposition, you know, or something. You know, it's like they just, you know, fire Rashi, you know, or something like, I don't know. Well, if it's a Capricorn, it'll be an Earth Rashi. So, but in any case, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like uh, in uh, in case if there are too many planets in Earth signs, then what are are the kind of problems that you have seen? Fire Those and things, water, you said. Yeah, and in, in Earth signs, it's going to be more more um three dosha. So all three doshas will be involved. Okay, I see. Now, typically, you know, earth element has to do with kapha dosha, okay? But in astrology, the earth element often has more of the signification of containing everything that precedes it. So earth element has all the other four elements in it. It's like the final product of those four elements. So everything is in them. And that's why Mercury, for example, is an earth element planet. And it's considered to be tridosha you know it has all three doshas it's mixed you know and mercury is balanced for that reason so i take earth to mean that more than i take it as kapha and a lot of reason for that is because i've seen a lot of people with like afflicted earth rashis and things like that and they're not necessarily kapha people 
and they're not necessarily having kapha problems. But in, in most cases, almost all cases, those people have some of the more difficult to describe diseases because it's mixed. Like those are the people you can't quite say, oh, wow, is it vata or is it kapha? Is it pitta or is it this? You, you just can't quite tell. And it's because all three factors are somehow involved. It's a mixed case. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to ask you last is, how have you seen the transits playing role? So for example, now Saturn is in Sagittarius. So do you think like, I mean, as per the sidereal side, of course. So have sure. you, or, or anything like that, have you seen that suppose for some time, like for 25 days, if Venus goes into now, now from like January 1st, 2nd, it will go to Scorpio for 20, 25 days. So then, or anything else, have you seen any specific effects happening that time? I think you can definitely take the significations of transits as if, you know, you're reading a chart, you know, you can look at the chart for this moment and look at the transits and say, you know, what's going on, you know, if, if a sign, if a planet enters its sign of debilitation or some difficult aspects are there or Mars, K2 are together like they were for a while recently, you know, those type of difficult conjunctions, definitely people will experience issues relative to those things. But the degree to which those experiences become significant or pathological will depend entirely on whether the person has a weakness in that area of their body such that the disease could manifest. So if we have immunity, if we have, if we're strong, if we're healthy, if our life energy is balanced, then it doesn't matter what's happening in the weather report of astrology or anything else. We have the resistance to that dynamic that allows us to remain steadfast. That's why the sun is vitality, because it's steadfast, right? So more importantly, I would say, is to look at transits in relationship to a person's chart and see that overlay, see what transit is affecting what, what is activating what in the chart. Those will be the times when certain types of imbalances happen. And I use that a lot in looking at people's charts. Amazing. It's fantastic. And medical astrology is very vast. <laughs> it is. It's an amazing, amazing subject. Yeah. And this is, I mean, I think this is the most difficult part of Jyotish. I feel like this personally. Mm -hmm. Because it's like how much ever you do, but some, because the body itself is so complex. And then astrology is so complex. Mm -hmm. And then relating both of them is like, that's such a difficult task. It is more difficult than matching compatibility between two people or speaking <laughs> when, when they will get married or when they are going to have a promotion or when will they be fired or anything like that. But this is, this is huge. And thank you very much. We will uh, get back soon again, maybe someone near time in the future too. Yeah, definitely. Thanks very much for having me, Babaji. Yeah. And uh, you are speaking of some course which you are going to do. January. Yes, I'm doing a course on Ayurveda and astrology. And okay. for that, people should check out, I guess they should go to Ryan's channel, you know, where the videos are. So Ryan Kurzak of Ashwell Vedic Astrology. That's where he's uploaded the videos of us talking about Ayurveda and astrology. And in those videos, you'll see the description and link to where you can find the course. All right. So I will give your channel also. And do you have a website also? I do. Yeah. My website is atmaastrology.com. Okay. So I will give the YouTube channel and the website in the description of all the three videos which we have recorded now. And if you have not watched the part one and part two, then please go and watch it. Okay. So Nishi, thank you very much for coming and enlightening us about medical astrology. It's, although it's a very vast topic. So we will see each other very soon. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.